Welcome everyone. I'm Maria, Quality Assurance Manager at Big Town Research. And I want to introduce you to our Regulatory Affairs Manager, James. Thanks, Maria. Today we are here to uncover the critical updates in the ICHGCB E6 R3 guidelines. Updates to guidelines, James? I bet that's music to your ears. These changes are indeed substantial and will impact the clinical research landscape. The last major update was back in 2016 with E6 R2. The new version brings substantial changes to adapt to the evolving landscape of clinical trials, ensuring we stay ahead with best practices. Before we start, we want to highlight that if you are taking this course, then it is assumed that you have previously completed DAOs and good clinical practice training covering ICH GCP E 6R2. With that being said, anyone is welcome to join us. Here's what we'll cover in today's session. We'll provide an overview of the key changes introduced in the E6R3 guidelines. We'll dive into the updated structure and content, emphasizing the streamlined and more focused approach. Then, we'll discuss the emphasis on key principles, which have been refined from 13 to 11. Next, we'll explore the integration of advanced technology, enhancing efficiency and data accuracy. We'll also cover the enhanced focus on quality management and risk-based monitoring. Additionally, we'll discuss the expansion of ethical guidelines to further protect participants and ensure data integrity. Lastly, we'll look at the increased responsibilities for all stakeholders involved in clinical trials. It's a comprehensive agenda designed to provide you with all the necessary information about the new guidelines. Let's get started with an overview of the key changes. The new structure of the E6R3 guidelines is designed to be more intuitive and comprehensive. The guidelines now include an introduction, a set of principles, Annex 1, a glossary, and several appendices. This updated structure simplifies navigation and ensures all critical areas are comprehensively covered. For instance, Annex 1 now clearly defines the roles and responsibilities of key stakeholders like IRBs, investigators, and sponsors. The glossary has been updated to include new terms and definitions, ensuring clarity and consistency across the guidelines. The appendices provide detailed guidance on essential documents such as the investigator's brochure, clinical trial protocol, and essential records for the conduct of a clinical trial. The goal of the new structure is to make the guidelines more user-friendly and applicable across various types of clinical trials. ICH is also working on an Annex 2, expected to be released around May 2025, which will provide additional guidance on applying GCP principles to innovative trial designs and emerging data sources, further supporting regulatory and healthcare decision-making. Now let's introduce the updated definition of good clinical practice, which sets the foundation for these guidelines. One of the significant updates is the refined definition of good clinical practice. From the glossary in the new document, GCP is defined as a standard for the planning, initiating, performing, recording, oversight, evaluation, analysis, and reporting of clinical trials that provides assurance that the data and reported results are reliable and that the rights, safety, and well-being of trial participants are protected. The updated definition in ICH E6 R3 reflects a comprehensive approach to GCP, emphasizing mandatory compliance, data integrity, and the protection of participants throughout the entire trial process. This ensures that trials are conducted according to sound scientific principles and meet high ethical standards, keeping pace with modern advancements in clinical research practices. All right, Maria, with this foundational understanding, let's start with the refined key principles that guide these practices. The key principles are at the core of the E6 R3 guidelines. These have been refined from 13 to 11 principles to provide clearer and more focused guidance. The first and most important principle is the protection of participants. This includes ensuring informed consent, protecting the privacy of participant data, and monitoring for any adverse events throughout the trial. The new guidelines provide more detailed strategies for achieving these protections, such as enhanced data privacy measures and more robust monitoring frameworks. Robust science is another critical principle. The guidelines now ensure that the scientific methods used are sound and that the trials yield valid and reliable results. This involves using rigorous study designs, appropriate statistical methods, and ensuring reproducibility of results. For example, the updated guidelines emphasize the use of control groups and randomization in trials to reduce bias more rigorously than before. 
They also stress the importance of pre-trial risk assessments and continuous data review throughout the trial. Quality management has become a central focus. It involves designing trials with quality in mind from the outset and continuously monitoring and improving processes throughout the trial. The new guidelines introduce a more structured approach to quality management, including the implementation of quality by design principles and risk-based quality management systems that proactively identify and mitigate issues before they affect trial outcomes. Risk management is also crucial. Identifying, assessing and mitigating risks to trial quality and participant safety is fundamental. The guidelines now provide more detailed strategies for managing risks effectively, such as risk-based monitoring and contingency planning. This includes a more proactive approach to risk management, where potential risks are assessed at the planning stage and continuously monitored and managed throughout the trial. Ensuring the reliability of results is essential. The data collected during trials must be accurate and trustworthy, enabling informed decision-making. This principle reinforces the importance of data integrity and reliability, which includes data verification, validation processes, and ensuring traceability. The updated guidelines emphasize the need for robust data management systems and regular audits to ensure the integrity of trial data. By adhering to these refined key principles, we can conduct trials that are ethical, scientifically sound, and of the highest quality. One of the most transformative aspects of the E6R3 guidelines is the enhanced integration of advanced technology. While the use of technology in clinical trials is not new, the updated guidelines formalize and expand its role significantly. For example, the new guidelines emphasize the use of electronic medical records, or EMRs, to streamline data collection and analysis. This change is crucial as it allows for real-time data access and sharing across different sites, which improves the efficiency and accuracy of data handling. Additionally, the guidelines highlight the adoption of wearable devices. These devices enable continuous monitoring of patient vitals and other important metrics, providing a richer data set that can enhance patient safety and trial outcomes. The formal inclusion of wearables in the guidelines represents a significant shift towards leveraging continuous data streams in clinical research. Another notable advancement is the introduction of e-consent processes. The guidelines now support the use of electronic consent forms, which can include multimedia presentations and interactive elements to ensure participants fully understand the trial. This not only improves compliance, but also enhances the participant experience. Lastly, the guidelines advocate for more sophisticated data management systems. These systems are essential for securely storing, managing, and analyzing data from various sources. The emphasis on robust data management infrastructure underscores the importance of data integrity and security in modern clinical trials. By integrating these advanced technologies, the E6R3 guidelines aim to enhance the efficiency, accuracy, and participant safety in clinical trials, paving the way for more innovative and effective research practices. One of the key enhancements in the E6R3 guidelines is the introduction of quality by design. This proactive approach involves planning trials with quality in mind from the very beginning. It means identifying critical data and processes and designing protocols to ensure these elements are consistently maintained. This includes setting predefined quality thresholds, identifying potential risks early, and implementing mitigation strategies from the start. For instance, designing data collection forms to minimize errors and ensure consistency across sites. Risk-based monitoring, a concept that has been advocated for years, is now a significant enhancement in the E6R3 guidelines. By focusing monitoring efforts on the most critical aspects of the trial, we can ensure data integrity and participant safety while using resources more efficiently. This approach prioritizes monitoring activities based on comprehensive risk assessment results, allowing for more targeted and effective oversight. Continuous improvement is also a major focus in the updated guidelines. This means regularly reviewing trial processes and outcomes, identifying areas for improvement, and implementing changes to enhance quality. For example, using metrics and key performance indicators to track progress and identify issues early. An example of this in practice is a recent study where risk-based monitoring identified data discrepancies early, allowing for timely corrective actions and ultimately improving the study's reliability. This approach not only improves data quality, but also enhances the overall efficiency of the trial. 
By integrating these quality enhancements, we can ensure that clinical trials are conducted to the highest standards, providing reliable and credible results. Next, let's explore the expanded ethical considerations in the E6R3 guidelines. As we would suspect, ethical considerations are a cornerstone of the E6R3 guidelines. Ensuring that participants provide informed consent is essential, and the new guidelines provide clearer guidance on how to achieve this. This includes more specific instructions on presenting information to participants, ensuring they fully understand the trial's purpose, procedures, risks, and benefits. Informed consent must be obtained before any trial procedures begin, highlighting the need for comprehensive participant education. Transparency is another critical aspect. Researchers must be open about the trial's objectives, procedures, and potential risks. This helps build trust and ensures participants are fully aware of what they are consenting to. It also involves disclosing any conflicts of interest and ensuring that the trial results are published, regardless of the outcomes. Privacy and confidentiality are also paramount. The guidelines emphasize the importance of protecting participant data, ensuring it is used appropriately and kept secure. This includes implementing robust data protection measures and ensuring compliance with relevant data protection regulations. A great example is a recent multi-site trial on a new diabetes treatment where e-consent was utilized. Participants accessed an interactive platform to review consent documents, watch explanatory videos, and even chat with study staff for clarifications. This not only increased understanding and compliance, but also allowed real-time tracking of consent form engagement, ensuring thorough review. By upholding these ethical considerations, we ensure that clinical trials are conducted with the utmost respect for participants' rights and well-being. The E6R3 draft guidelines outline increased responsibilities for all stakeholders involved in clinical trials. Investigators are responsible for conducting the trial according to the protocol and ensuring the integrity of the data. This includes duties such as recruiting and informing participants, managing the day-to-day -day operations of the trial, and ensuring that all trial procedures are followed correctly. Investigators must also maintain accurate and complete records of all trial activities. Sponsors have a heightened role in overseeing the trial, ensuring compliance with the guidelines, and supporting investigators in maintaining high standards of quality and ethics. Sponsors are responsible for providing the necessary resources, training, and support to investigators. This includes developing the trial protocol, ensuring it complies with regulatory requirements, and monitoring the trial's progress. Sponsors must also ensure that all data is accurately collected, analyzed, and reported. Recent updates have expanded the role of ethics committees in protecting clinical trial participants. Committees now utilize advanced technologies to oversee informed consent processes and trial protocols, ensuring ethical compliance in real time. There is an increased focus on detailed risk-benefit analyses and continuous monitoring of participant safety. These enhancements are designed to uphold higher ethical standards and provide comprehensive protection for trial participants. A compelling example is a recent multi-center trial on an innovative immunotherapy for melanoma. Enhanced sponsor oversight included implementing real-time data monitoring systems that allowed sponsors to track trial progress and data integrity continuously. Investigators received specialized training on the new technology used in the trial, ensuring they could effectively manage and report data. Ethics committees conducted monthly reviews and on-site audits to verify informed consent processes and monitor participant safety closely. These rigorous measures helped promptly identify potential issues, leading to immediate corrective actions and ensuring the trial's high ethical standards and data integrity. By clearly defining and reinforcing these responsibilities, the E6R3 guidelines ensure that all stakeholders are accountable for their roles in conducting ethical and high-quality clinical trials. Now, let's look at the overall impact these changes will have on trial conduct. The changes introduced in the E6R3 guidelines should have a positive impact on how clinical trials are conducted. This includes more streamlined processes, making it easier to manage and conduct trials efficiently. For instance, the guidelines emphasize the use of centralized monitoring systems, which reduce the need for on-site visits, saving both time and resources. That's right, Maria. Improved data quality is expected to be another key benefit. The emphasis on technology and quality management practices is anticipated to help ensure that the data collected is accurate, reliable, and robust. This includes the adoption of real-time data collection methods, 
integration of electronic health records, and implementation of sophisticated data management systems. Such measures reduce data entry errors and enhance the overall integrity of the data. Participant safety is enhanced through better risk management and ethical oversight. This means that participants are better protected throughout the trial process. Improved informed consent processes, regular monitoring for adverse events, and clear communication with them all contribute to enhanced safety. For example, the guidelines recommend using digital tools for informed consent, which can help ensure that participants fully understand what they're agreeing to. Absolutely, Maria. Improved data quality is expected to be another key benefit. The emphasis on technology and quality management practices is anticipated to help ensure that the data collected is accurate, reliable, and robust. This includes real-time data collection, which allows researchers to track patient progress instantly, the integration of electronic health records for comprehensive data access, and the implementation of sophisticated data management systems to minimize errors and enhance data integrity. For example, in a recent cardiovascular trial, wearable devices provided continuous monitoring of patient vitals, enabling the research team to respond quickly to any issues, significantly improving patient outcomes and data reliability. By embracing these changes, we can not only conduct clinical trials more efficiently and effectively, but also improve the overall quality of healthcare outcomes. Now, James, let's discuss the challenges and strategies for implementing these new guidelines, which is crucial for their successful adoption. Implementing the new E6R3 guidelines will come with its challenges. Training and education are crucial to ensure that all stakeholders understand and can apply the new guidelines effectively. This involves developing comprehensive training programs for investigators, sponsors, and ethics committees. These programs should cover the updated principles, new technologies, and enhanced quality and ethical standards. Another significant challenge is resource allocation. Ensuring there are adequate resources to support the changes, from technology to personnel, is essential for successful implementation. This includes investing in new technologies, hiring additional staff, and ensuring that existing staff are adequately trained. Regulatory compliance must also be maintained. Staying up to date with the latest regulations and ensuring that all trial processes meet these standards is critical. This involves regular audits, compliance checks, and staying informed about changes in regulatory requirements. With proper planning and support, these challenges can be overcome. Continuous training programs, adequate resource planning, and regular regulatory reviews can help ensure a smooth transition to the new guidelines. It's a big task, but the benefits of these changes far outweigh the challenges. By embracing the E6R3 guidelines, we can improve the quality, efficiency, and ethical standards of our clinical trials. Dot finally, comma, let's summarize the key changes and the benefits of implementing the new guidelines. To recap, the E6R3 guidelines introduce significant changes in structure, guiding principles, technology integration, quality management, ethical considerations, and stakeholder responsibilities. These changes are designed to enhance the quality, reliability, and ethical standards of clinical trials, ensuring better outcomes for all stakeholders involved. Implementing these guidelines will bring numerous benefits, including improved data quality, streamlined processes, and enhanced participant safety. Additionally, we've prepared a reference guide summarizing these changes, which will be available for all course takers. This will be a great resource to refer back to as you implement the new guidelines. We encourage all stakeholders to embrace these changes and work together to ensure successful implementation. Continuous education, collaboration, and adherence to these guidelines will be key to our success. Thank you for joining us today. We hope this presentation has provided valuable insights into the E6R3 guidelines and how they will impact your work in clinical research. Thanks for helping me out, James. And to all of our viewers, please stay tuned for more updates and training sessions. Together, we can achieve excellence in clinical trials. Until next time, take care and stay informed.